YouTube, welcome back. So, today what I'm going to be doing is addressing a little uh, lifter knock that I got going on in the, this is just a GMC Sierra, but any of these GM LS motors, this sh same method should apply. So, uh, and to know if you have this, you may hear when you start up your truck in the morning, it should be worse in the morning or when you have a cold engine or that type of thing. Uh, you hear a little knocking, like a tick, 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 a little ticking sound, or you know your your gasoline engine may sound like a diesel uh, before it gets warmed up. Mine's been getting worse. It's been getting a little cooler in the morning, so when I start it up, uh, I definitely hear it. And I've done this procedure before uh, many years ago, and I had pretty good success with it. So I'm going to go ahead and do it again today, just for fun, and uh, I'll be able to get the chance to film it. Um, but basically, what the idea is that in these model engines, the lifter is really just a cylindrical, uh, you know, shaped object, and it has some little holes in it where oil can flow up and, and get to the uh, lube, the rockers and stuff. So what can happen is uh, you can get some, you know, dirt or debris can get in those holes and clog it up. You can get some sludge, you know, from dried oil, that type of thing. So what you can actually do that I've done before, I've just used some carburetor cleaner. Um, you can really use any kind you want. I'm going to be using uh, the B12 Chem Tool version. But we're going to take the, uh, the head gasket, the head cover off, and I'll show you how to do all that real quick. Um, and we'll pull out the, the lifting rods. And what we're actually going to do is basically just apply some of this uh, carburetor tool or carburetor cleaner on top of the lifters and hopefully it'll seep down and kind of clean them out. Um, I'll also be doing an oil change today. You don't have to do an oil change because you're not going to be putting a lot of carb cleaner in there. It shouldn't really hurt your oil too much as long as you change it on a regular basis. But since I'm doing it today, I may apply a little bit more carb cleaner to just help out a little bit more, but um, you don't have to do that. So that's kind of the general idea. I'll be able to explain it a little more once we get under there and then give you a little preview and show you how how it sounds currently and, and how to address it. So let's get going. So I've gone ahead and started the engine up here. Um, I'm in a garage, so it's kind of echoing a little bit. And actually, it's pretty warm. I just ran to the store about a half hour ago, and it's actually pretty warm outside today, about 80 degrees. But underneath these in, underneath these coil packs here, these are what actually fire your spark plugs. But this will be your your heads on each side. And the lifters are down in there. You may hear the knocking come from from this general area. And if you have some type of scope or a, you know stethoscope that you can listen with, or just kind of get your head down in there and, and try to narrow it down, you don't actually have to lubricate all the lifters. If you can narrow it down to either just the front couple lifters or maybe somewhere in the middle, then you can just lubricate those. But I'm going to go ahead just for for demo purposes. I'll I'll do all of them here. And you can hear it's, it's not too bad right now, now that it's warmed up. But trust me, there is a little bit of knocking, and, and you'll know when you have it, you can hear it pretty good. It sounds you know, maybe like a diesel engine or a ping sound. So um, let's go ahead and start taking this all apart, and it's, it's pretty easy, and then I'll show that process. So go ahead and start by removing your, your top shroud or cover here. It's just an 8mm socket. Now that this top shroud cover is removed, so basically what I want to do, I'm going to do this right side because that's where my knocking uh, is happening. It's a little easier over on the other side, but I'm going to do this side first. So really what you're wanting to do, just go ahead and start, you know, moving. A lot of the stuff you don't have to actually take all the way apart. You can kind of just disconnect some of these snap rings and stuff, uh, these quick disconnects on these hoses, and kind of just move everything out of the way just to give us room to get down to those coil packs. We'll remove that whole assembly as one and then the, the head cover should come right off. So go ahead and start. Here's a clip here, here's a clip here. We can you know loosen up this main, main guy and we'll start disconnecting some of these hoses and stuff. And while I'm at it, so I have these quick disconnects for this main wiring harness disconnected. I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect all of these wires from this little power tap here in this battery box. Um, I'm going to go ahead and disconnect all of those. I may actually unbolt this from the this brace here so I can remove it and we can get all of these out of the way and that will also allow us to, to move this guy out of the way as well. So go ahead and do that. It's a little more work but it will give you more, more room to work with and 
keep us from getting less pissed off later. You can see I got that, that red power tap, that block out of the way. Um, unbolted in from here as well. And now I can, this main wiring harness, I can just pull off to the side. Don't forget to disconnect. This wire has a, a connect right here by the headers. So go ahead and disconnect him as well and we'll be able to pull him. You can actually pull him. I don't know if you can see that very good, but just pull him back and you'll be able to loop him over the... I had a little flash lock. What do I do with it? Well, right here there's a power steering reservoir. Right here. Ground sign reservoir. Tuck him behind that. Um, and now you can see we're starting to get some room here to work. Um, there's a couple connects here for this main main wiring that comes into the, the cool pack. And there's a little blue safety tab on there. So go ahead and we'll disconnect that. I'm going to go ahead and disconnect all of these spark plug boots as well. Uh, be careful when you do that. You may want to use like a little flathead. You don't want to just pull on the wire. Be sure and slide it from the top down, something like that. And you can just let those dangle. They won't be in our way too much. Then once we do that, and if any of these hoses are in your way or if they're bugging you, just go ahead and you know get a little piece of piece of cord or something, tie them off to, to your hood or some zip ties or whatever. But to keep it simple, I'm just gonna move them out of the way a little bit. And it should be relatively easy from then on. Just to give me enough room. There's plenty of room in here, but... Just be smart about it, guys. Disconnect stuff, move it, remember where it was connected. Just make some area here to, to work. Okay, so I got some pretty good room here. And again, up here on the top center, you see that gray right there where the light's shining? That's really the only main connector that comes in outside of this coil pack. So be sure and disconnect him. You can see I've, there's the top side of him. I've moved him up out of the way. Um, and now we're ready to remove this guy. I wish I had a little more light for y'all, but you'll notice I think there's one, two, there's either three or four. Yeah, there's four. You'll see these guys that look like this. This first one is on the very end. He's easy to see. A little bolt sticking up and it has this nut that screws down onto it. That's what holds the coil pack onto this head cover. So it's just sitting there. They're not combined in any way or one shape or the other, but this is what holds them down. So we're going to remove all four of those and this whole coil pack will come right off. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to try to film it maybe. Uh, and then we'll move to the next step. So I couldn't film that so good. I couldn't get my camera in a position where it would stay put. But there's actually five of these bolts. So here's the coil pack removed. There's that main connector. If you remember, we, we disconnected him. Here's what one of these bolts looks like. So the nut's actually part of the bolt. But there's five of those. They come out real easy, 10 millimeter. So one, two, three, four. So it kind of makes like a little sine wave and then it goes up there. So get those out. And you can see once those guys are out, pull these wires over to the side. So there's our head cover there. Now what we're going to do is remove this guy. And to do that, oh, hold on, let me get some light. So now that that coil pack's out of our way, you can see our our head cover here. It's real easy to get to, and we'll be able to, to easily remove that guy. Um, one thing to remember: there is a vacuum hose here. This guy that comes down, follow it with the light, and it'll go in right there. That's your PCV valve. That should pull right out, relatively easy. Try to film it real quick. You should be able to just kind of, oh, just jimmy it with your hand. You may can twist it a little bit, but it should just pull right out. There's your PCV valve on there. Go ahead and check that while you're at it. There should be that little ball or float in there. You should hear it rattle. If that's not there, you'll definitely need a new one of those. So go ahead and check that while you're at it. You can just tuck him off to the side. And all that remains now is one, two, three, four, 
four of these little bolts here. One, two, three, four. There's can't miss them. We're gonna go ahead and loosen those up, and it should come right out. So I'll try to film this so that you can have an idea how it's gonna be. So I've already removed those two end bolts, and these I've actually already loosened up enough that it's loose. And and once you do that, this whole you can see this cover just lifts right off. Um, and there you go, we'll have our lifters down in there, or our rockers and lifters access. Let me get a better light, but that just pulls right off, and then now we're going to dive into this guy. Okay, now we're talking, I've acquired another light, and we can see what the heck is going on now. So there you go, this is an 8 cylinder, so four on each side. And we have uh, two rockers per cylinder, so one will be intake and one will be exhaust. Now that we have the cover off we can see down in here. You can go ahead and clean some of that up if you want while you're at it and you can also check it out and see if if any of your rockers in certain places are a lot darker than others then you know um, those are getting a little hotter than than some locations that could be another sign that that lifter is not functioning as well as some of the other locations not getting as much oil up to that area but for the most part on this side, I look pretty uniform. So now what we're going to do underneath these rockers, so this is actually a, a nut here. We can remove that nut and this rocker will just lift right up. These springs, they have their own retainer, so they'll stay put. So what I'm going to do, I'll try to film one, but you're going to go ahead and just remove this nut and this this rocker will come right off and down here on the end where this little hole is underneath that's the rod that goes down in to the head and at the end of that rod is the lifter chamber so that's where we're going to actually apply our carburetor cleaner is down in this hole where this lifter rod is but we got to remove this rocker first so I'm going to try to film it if I can't get to it all I'm doing is removing this bolt or this nut here and when you do this, please, please, please keep these in order. Don't lose the order. Don't mix up any of the rods with the rockers. Just take one off, go place it. You can even label it on a napkin or something. Just keep the order that they are in and don't mess that up. All right, so here we go. Okay, I'm now at the point. These first four, I've loosened up all of these bolts. I just wanted to show you. I'm going to keep track of the order, but I'm going to do it over here on this one first just because it's easier to see on the camera. I also had to put a glove on. These are still pretty hot. But the lifter, and you can see that bolt, that'll come out all as one. And this is where I was talking about. Now you can see that lifting rod right there. And he should just pull right out. Oh, And just be careful. Don't ding these things around any. So there you can see a push rod or this lifting rod. So go ahead and do that and, and again remember to keep all of these in order as you remove them. So I've got my first four rockers removed and I have them lined up here again in order. One, two, three, four. This is the rocker itself with the bolt and this is the rod and I've also kept it this was this was this was the top side when it was in the truck. This was the bottom. So go ahead and keep them in that orientation as well. You don't want to be flipping them. But what these are, these are basically a, these are a hollow tube. So in addition to cleaning the lifters here in a minute, I'm going to go ahead and you can go ahead and clean these. You can actually spray your carb cleaner right through the center of these guys. And that'll help shoot out any of that sludge build up inside there as well. You can also apply it to the outer side. To, to, you can see it dripping off a lot of that sludge. I'll go ahead and slick these up and then we'll re-lubricate them with some oil before we put them back in there. But Go ahead and while you have these out, you might as well clean them as well. Help remove any of that old sludge and build up that may be on these guys. Now so I got the rods over there cleaning and soaking in some, some carb cleaner. Now we're going to work on the lifters themselves down in these holes. So these holes where we removed 
the rods, the lifters are actually down in there. I'm gonna try, I'm gonna try to get a shot of this. I don't know if it's gonna work or not. So maybe I can shine the light through one of these other holes. Let's try this guy. So now, you can't see it on the camera, but once you have it out, when you're doing it your own self, you can look down in these holes or shine the light down in this one and look down this one. Because down there, there's all a valley where they're all connected. But you'll see the lifters down in there. So simply what we're going to do is just go ahead and spray your carb cleaner down in there and spray enough that it'll kind of pull up. Eventually it should drip down through there, but it should, while it drips down through the lifter, it should clean it out and, and kind of sl slick up some of that sludge buildup and flush it out down through the bottom. So go ahead and pull that up on any of these areas that you've removed the, uh, the lifter rods. So you can see I'm just kind of liberally spraying it down into these holes. And again, I am doing an oil change at the same time I'm doing this, so I'm comfortable with spraying quite a bit of this. If you're not doing an oil change, you should still be fine to do it rather liberally. There should be way more quantity of oil than, than what you're spraying of this. Just be conscious that you did put it in there and maybe do your oil change a, a little sooner than you might have under normal circumstances. So I'm focusing on these front four because that's more of where my knock was coming from. And it's a little easier to film. Those are kind of farther back in there, but I'll probably go ahead and do those while I'm at it. Um, so go ahead and do that, and I'm going to come back with the assembly process. I don't think there's any need for me to film all of this. So I went ahead and did all eight and I let the lifter, those lifter holes soak with carburetor cleaner for a while. Sprayed it several different times throughout there. Now I'm working, I'm starting the assembly process, or reassembly I guess you should say. I've already got all of the eight rods back in the location that they are originally in. And while I was doing the head and doing that, I went ahead and I actually applied a little bit of oil to each one of the rods and kind of rubbed it up and down. Um, you'll notice the carb cleaner when you sprayed it on those to uh, to clean them out. It's like a, a drying agent as well, so they'll become very dry. And I didn't want to just slide them in there that way because that first startup until the oil gets up here to these heads and starts circulating, it could have been a, a little rough. So I went ahead and lubed them up before I, I put them in there. Now I'm going to go ahead and put the rockers back on. And if you happen to spray carb cleaner on those, I'd go ahead and put a little drop of oil on them as well. Because they will uh, definitely knock until oil gets up through these rods and lubricates them. So go ahead and just, I'm going to go ahead and lube everything up while I uh, do the assembly, reassembly process. And any of that, any extra oil that may be up here, it'll just drip back down into the, the oil reservoir, the oil pan. So don't worry about that. Now, still in the reassembly process, but this is where we got to be a little bit conscious of what we're doing. So I got all the push rods back in, and I got the rocker arms back in their locations, and I've tightened down. First, you're gonna the first thing you're gonna want to do is tighten down all these bolts. Just hand tighten them, or you can just use the socket, you know, in your hand, and get these hand tight. And once they're getting towards where their hand tightened before we crank on them, make sure that all of these, the end of these arms are centered over the top of this spring. You don't want them to be crooked or cockeyed or anything like that. You want them to be perfectly centered. That way when they're rocking on these hinges, it'll be perfectly parallel to where they're seated. So that's one thing to be conscious of. So hand tighten all these as they're starting to get pretty tight. Go ahead and line them all up, and the next process will be the uh, tightening sequence. So if you don't have a book, the uh, the first thing to note, so 
for rocker arm bolts, that's what we're doing there. You can see it is 22. So 22 foot-pounds on all of those rocker bolts. Let me get it to focus. There we go. So we're going to be doing 22 foot-pounds on the rocker arm bolts. Now what I did, what I ended up doing, so 22 foot-pounds of torque. So since these are in pairs, intake and exhaust, I went ahead and did all of the, the odds. So 1, 3, 5, and 7. So go ahead and torque those down because they work in conjunction. And then I did all of the, uh, the evens, 2, 4, 6, and 8. And that worked out pretty good. And you can, if you want, you know, you can turn your crankshaft using the belt if you want to see that they're functioning properly or whatever. But that's basically the procedure, guys. Now what I'm going to do, go ahead and clean up your... You can use a rag or use a razor blade. These are aluminum heads, so you don't want to use anything too abrasive. But clean up your seating area where the gasket will seat for the uh, head cover. You can also go ahead and check out your check out the gasket on these head covers. Most of the time, these are still pretty good. The factory gasket, this rubber guy, he's actually pretty good. But go ahead and clean that up. You can even clean these up inside, outside, if you want. Whatever your personal preference is, however OCD you are about it. But go ahead and definitely clean the gasket area and the, the seating area. And then we'll work on uh, reassembling everything just like we did the disassembly process. Got the valve cover placed back on there and these four bolts. I've gone ahead and uh, hand tightened those down pretty good. And while I was doing that, I kind of wiggled the valve cover around to make sure the gasket was seated evenly around all the edges. Now this also has a torque specification, so let me get it to zoom. So valve cover bolts, 106 inch pounds. So my wrench is in foot pounds. We'll divide that by 12. That's like 8.8 uh, .8 or something. So I may just round up to 9 or somewhere roughly in that range. And I will do a little sequence on these. There's not a specified sequence. Since it is only eight foot pounds, you shouldn't warp this guy. But I'm going to do, you know, middle out. So like here, here, back to here, then back to here, or something like that. Or if you wanted to be even more cautious, you could do a two stage, like a four pound tightening sequence, then uh, finish off with the 8.8, .8, roughly nine pound, foot pounds of torque. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Now the valve cover's back on. I've torqued it down into place. And really from here, everything's just the opposite of, of how we removed it. You know, putting the coil pack back on and connecting all the wires, it's relatively straightforward. Also, don't forget to reconnect your, your vacuum hose with your PCV valve on the end. And that went way in the back there of the valve cover. And it should seat down in there relatively easily and nicely. So I'm going to try to not film all of this. It's the opposite of, of how I took it off, but... So remember your, your coil pack, be sure and connect back up the main electronics for that guy. And then connect all of your spark plug boots back to those coil packs. And also don't forget, we removed this battery pack here that had several wires and connections going to it. As well as this, this connector here that went down here by the, uh, the number one spark plug. So I'm going to get all that put back together, show a final clip, and then maybe we'll run this guy real quick. So everything's put back together. I fired the truck up. Make sure everything sounds, nothing sounds out of order. Uh, again, it's still a little warm out here, so I don't really, I don't hear the knock right now, but I didn't hear it too much before. So tomorrow morning when it's a little cooler, that'll be the real test. But this is just a check. Nothing seems out of order, so I didn't mess anything up during the reassembly. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the shroud back on. And like I said before, I'm gonna go ahead and do an oil change. Just since I literally sprayed quite a bit of that carb cleaner and I was gonna already do an oil change anyway, it's that time for me. So it's not mandatory for you, just depends how much uh, carb cleaner you put in there. And again, it's gonna be inside mixed with your oil, so. Just be conscious of that and maybe change your oil uh, a little sooner than you normally would have or go ahead and do it right now. 
that's basically it guys uh, addressing some lifter knock that I had using uh, the car cleaner method comment subscribe go go go